Denzel Washington, Courage Under Fire, in two weeks on the ABC Big Picture Show. Wednesday. I'm a management consultant. There's someone new at the workplace. I wanted to get to know you. Just want to know what he looks like. You're not jealous, are you? D.B. Sweeney guest stars. Somebody needs to churn up the water. I did a terrible thing. An all-new Once and Again, Wednesday, 10, 9 central on ABC. The Southland's shaken up by a strong earthquake, and El Salvador has a quake of its own, but this one is deadly. And a beloved former president sails through surgery. It's all next at 11. That went really well. And hey, can you believe it? This is ABC7 Los Angeles. Now, Philip Palmer, Leslie Sykes, Garth Kemp, and Rob Fukasaki with Eyewitness News at 11. As former President Ronald Reagan recovers from hip surgery, he receives an outpouring of prayers and good wishes. We love him dearly and, and wish him the very best of luck. Speedy recovery. Good evening to you. I'm Philip Palm. And I'm Leslie Sykes. Here's the latest at 11 o'clock. Former President Ronald Reagan has been hospitalized since last night when he fell and fractured his hip. This morning he underwent surgery to repair it. Eyewitness News reporter Laura McLaughlin is live from Santa Monica with the very latest. Laura. Well, Leslie, tonight, last word from the hospital is that President Reagan is listed in stable condition. Now, although doctors tell us he's doing much better tonight than he was this time last night, they say he could be hospitalized for seven to ten days. Um, he's doing well. We're happy. It is uh, serious. It's a serious injury. Um, and it's guarded since he's a patient with nine years old with other medical problems. Dr. Kevin Earhart, who led President Ronald Reagan's hip repair surgery here at St. John's Health Center, says the former president is in for a long uphill struggle. There is the healing of the fracture that has to take place. There is the rehabilitation that has to take place. Uh, the strength to do that. They have to have a good heart and lungs so they don't have problems with pneumonia. Despite what's ahead for President Reagan, so far they say he's done pretty good, remaining in stable condition throughout the surgery, which lasted just over an hour. Holding an implant device similar to the one used during surgery, Earhart explains how the surgical team repaired the fracture. The large screw at the end goes uh, into the side of the bone, across the fracture, and into the, the head of the um, femur. And then the plate here goes along the side of the shaft of the of the uh, femur, they're con connected, and then the plate is screwed to the shaft of the femur. During the entire ordeal, doctors say Mrs. Reagan has remained by his side. Uh, she has been with him all last night, uh, all day today. She came down to surgery with us. When we actually went in the surgery suite itself, she stayed back in one of the other surgery rooms. She met us in the recovery room and has been at his bedside since that time. Now, so far, we understand only Mrs. Reagan has been allowed to see him, but according to doctors, other family members may be allowed in as early as tomorrow morning. Of course, on that list, it could include his daughter, Maureen, who's also hospitalized here at St. John's, undergoing cancer treatments. Tonight, we're live in Santa Monica. Laura McLaughlin, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Philip, back to you in the studio. Laura, thank you very much. Members of Mr. Reagan's small but elite fraternity of presidents are putting him in their thoughts tonight, including our sitting president. I sent... Uh... My concern in Hillary's to Mrs. Reagan and President Reagan, and of course I wish him well in this uh, surgery, and our prayers are with him. President-elect George W. Bush also called Mrs. Reagan from his Texas ranch with his wish for a speedy recovery, and former President Gerald Ford also phoned, phoned his concerns as well. Well, this isn't the former president's first big scare. In 1981, two months after Ronald Reagan took office, he was nearly assassinated. Mr. Reagan was on his way to an event in Washington, D.C. when John Hinckley Jr. rushed through the crowd and opened fire. The president and three others were struck. Although Mr. Reagan was seriously wounded, he recovered quickly. At Hinckley's 1982 trial, he was found not guilty by reason of insanity, and he's been in a mental hospital since then. <clears throat> When the former president announced in 1994 that he's suffering from Alzheimer's disease, the nation sympathized with him. He released a letter which said, I have recently been told that I am one of the millions of Americans that will be affected with Alzheimer's disease. He went on to say, I now begin the journey into the sunset of my life. Concern for the Reagan family has been pouring in from around the world. The Ronald Reagan Presidential Foundation runs a website where you can send your well wishes. The family is asked that you send your email messages to www.reaganfoundation.org 
or send them to 40 Presidential Drive, Simi Valley, California, and the zip is 93065. Now, it could be a long and difficult road for the former president. We, please stay with ABC7 for any new developments. We will continue to bring you the latest on Ronald Reagan's condition. Well, did you feel it? An earthquake and aftershock shook most of the Los Angeles area tonight. This one didn't cause any injuries, but it sure shook a lot of folks' nerves. The quake struck at 6.26 p.m., two miles northeast of the city of San Fernando. Then a minute later, an aftershock rocked the area six miles northeast of Lakeview Terrace. Eyewitness News reporter Kelly Aquino is live in Old Town Pasadena with more. Kelly. Well, Leslie, many of the people I talked to didn't even know there was an earthquake here in Old Town, Pasadena. As for those who did feel the earth shake, the reactions ranged from no big deal to, boy, was it scary. So Star shows where the epicenter of the earthquake is, where it began. And then this is the distribution of shaking shown by colors. So if you live in the green colored area, the shaking was the strongest. Right near the epicenter, we would have experienced it as a very sharp jolt. I have a, a bar set at home, and I was by the bar, and then the bottle fell and hit me in the head. Show me where. Right here. <laughs> no, bump on. Right here. The whole property was just shaking. It was scary. And probably a little scarier than for those who live farther away from the San Fernando area epicenter. We just felt it, like, the table just started moving. Our dad was just like, did you feel that? And then I was like, are you sure you didn't move the table? He was like, yeah. And so we were like, okay, it was an earthquake. Seismologists call the 4.3 quake small, but admit they've gotten a lot of reaction because so many people were shaken, even if it was slight. I saw my computer shake, and then I felt the ground like rolling underneath me. And Lucy Jones says there were two notable aftershocks, including a 4.1 quake in the same area. Still, there have been no reports of any major damage. We really hope that every time people feel an earthquake like this, they remember, oh, you know, there was this thing I really should have done, that water I meant to have or that bookcase I meant to strap down. So Dr. Jones adds we should spend Sunday getting ready for any future earthquakes. In fact, in an earthquake emergency kit, we should have a flashlight, maybe some water, and even a portable radio. I'm Kelly Aquino reporting live in Pasadena, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Back to you, Philip. A powerful earthquake in Central America has caused widespread damage and death. Rescuers using sticks and their bare hands have been desperately digging, hoping to find survivors among the seven, several hundred people still missing. The fear, however, is that the death toll will climb from the latest count of 81. A major earthquake measuring 7.6 on the Richter scale ripped through Central America, causing widespread damage and death. People were in tears as they watched the dead and injured being pulled from beneath the rubble and the mud, many wondering the fate of their own family members. Crews carrying emergency and medical equipment were sent out to search for survivors. The quake could be felt across El Salvador, Guatemala, Nicaragua, Honduras, and the southern Mexican state of Chiapas. Witnesses say more than 200 homes were buried instantly as an entire hillside collapsed in the San Salvador suburb. The quake struck just before noon Saturday and knocked over buildings, leaving many homeless and without electricity and telephone service. Landslides have blocked roads and traffic is at a crawl as residents try to evacuate the hardest hit areas. <laughs> El Salvador's president, Francisco Flores, has declared a national state of emergency and has called on every citizen to help out. The quake also knocked out El Salvador's telephone service and electricity for several hours, and that impeded the spread of news. The U.S. Agency for International Development says as soon as a suitable airport is open, they will send a plane load of relief supplies to the country from a stockpile in Miami. And just ahead, Southern California hovered at the edge of darkness. Now Governor Davis has a possible plan to keep your lights on, but will it pack a punch to your pocketbook? And loud music may have led up to the violent death of a local police officer. Also a hit and run driver plows right into three young girls. The search for a teenage suspect is next. Hi, everybody. I'm Garth Kemp. I witness weather after a lot of rain, and I do mean a lot of rain. We have some dry skies coming away. We'll tell you about your complete forecast coming up. Finding a serial killer isn't as simple as black and white on the next Profiler. Tonight at 11.35, here on ABC7. Genuine Italian leather, right off the boat. Wix Furniture is having these unbelievable leathers.